So you gentlemen are really the eyes of the audience. I want you to watch me very closely as I do what should be good, solid riffle shuffles, something that you would be happy to see within the course of your own game. Uh, I'm going to give them one more and then do what gamblers call a dead cut, which is literally trying to let my hands reach the deck and cut an ace. This is an acquired skill. <laughs> and once again, please notice that there are no breaks or protrusions in the deck. There are no dog ears. Uh, I'm going to take the deck. I'm going to divide it very cleanly in half. I really am going to solidly shuffle the cards. And once again, I'm going to try to do what's called dead cutting an ace, to reach down into this part of the deck and cut out another ace. And by the way, notice if I cut even one card uh, too few or one card too many, I would have not have cut an ace. By the way, this is also something I practice left-handed. That's in case someone breaks my right thumb. So <laughs> let me try to cut the ace of spades for you. Left-handed, oh, lucky me. <laughs> now, those of you who follow the game would understand that each time I cut an ace, it's so much harder for me to cut the next one. This has something to do with the law of probability. <laughs> so anyway, that's the concept. And once again, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to watch me narrowly as I shuffle the cards. And Jeff, I'm going to give the deck some cuts at any point while I'm cutting. Would you say stop? Stop. That's good. Be my guest. <laughs> Put it on the table. doing very well. Uh, can I induce you to stay for the postgraduate uh, lecture here? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, tonight I've chosen three topics for discussion. Uh, first, card control, what happens when cards are shuffled and cut. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little about false dealing. You've heard the term dealing from the bottom of the deck, probably. I'm going to discuss that. Then maybe end up with a demonstration of card stacking. Uh, but first, can cards be controlled? Well, yes. So I, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate how this actually might look. This is very strange. This is really a gambler's exercise. It's something that's distinctly non-theatrical in tone, uh, but I hope you'd find it intriguing. So what I'm going to do, and again, these gentlemen are close by, they can see that I'm putting aces in the center of groups of cards at random, and then they are, at least for this second, out of my control. And what does that mean? It means it's an exercise in isolation, so there are many cards in between each ace. And yet, when I push them into the deck, I don't leave them protruding by a sixteenth of an inch or a thirty-second of an inch. At least for the moment, the aces are out of my control. I mean, they're squared and they're in the center. They're not sticking out. How do I get them back in my control? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I get them in my control by shuffling. How do I shuffle the cards? Well, this is a complex issue. If I were a cheat, I would want to shuffle the cards in a way so I did not seem more clever or less clever than anyone else in the game. Uh, let's say we were playing gin in Miami Beach and people shuffled in the old-fashioned way like this, then that's the way I would want to shuffle cards. If we were in a rather elegant New York uh, bridge parlor, you might see someone shuffle the cards in this way and then do a little bridge afterwards. That's what that's called, a little flourish, but it's a simple riffle shuffle. If you're uh, in Las Vegas, you wouldn't be allowed to shuffle cards like that. A pit boss would actually say to you, you must shuffle cards with them flat on the surface of the table. Why? They're afraid that if you put the cards in your hand, I could glimpse them or you could glimpse them. So this way, it's much more procedurally cautious for them. You would actually shuffle the cards like that. Then I'm sure you've all been to private games where people turn half the cards over and talk about, you know, anaconda, pass the garbage, uh, Alaskan <laughs> poker. And in this case, they're literally shuffling face-up cards into face-down cards like this, uh, leaving a distinct mess of cards from various positions. Well, what does a cheat do? Well, I can't speak for everyone, but I can tell you I've done this long enough that I can make three statements of absolute fact about the condition of the cards at this very moment. The first statement is, even though the aces were widely separated after all that shuffling, they are now together, one next to the other. The second statement is they're in the dead center of the deck. The third statement is to make it easier for you to see them, I've straightened out every other card, so only the four aces are face up. <laughs> 